Good afternoon. I think it's working. <laughs> oh, these grand experiments of Facebook Live. Um, hi, welcome to my broadcast. In case you were wondering what's going on, um, this is episode number 963. And I'll take a deeper dive into talking about relationships, particularly around respect and control. Um, I've been talking more about this recently. I talked yesterday um, about, well, primarily about the theme of having mutual, mutual respect and equality. I thought, let's take it a little bit deeper than that, because what started the yesterday conversation, I didn't really finish the thought, so I want to put it in today. So hopefully you can enjoy this conversation and get some value from it. This will hopefully transform your experience of relationship, and with any luck, you might decide to do things differently in the future than you did in the past. So thanks for being with me. So first of all, to recap somewhat what I said yesterday, in relationship, in romantic partnership, there is a opportunity, <laughs> opportunity, I'll put it that way first, to have equality, to be really connected, to be in a place of um, respect of who each other is and understanding the differences are respectable, not wrong. Because one of the challenges that we face in relationships is something that actually Alison Armstrong talks about in her work. In, and I'm just using as an example, I'm not saying it's one way or the other, but the problem is for a lot of women is they just think that men are just hairy women, meaning that when women look at us, they think that we are actually like them, which is inaccurate. That's also true the other way around, of course, is that men think women are the same way as we are as well, except for the fact that most men are very clear that they can't understand how women have emotions. It's one of the biggest discrepancies. But everything else think of the same. So there's an assumption we make between men and women that we think the same way, which we don't, at least rarely do. Just qualifying that for myself. Give me a second. Okay, sidebar. <laughs> it's going to be one of those talks today. When women embody the masculine in their world, this is one of the things I've been talking about a lot in other parts, women tend to copy the men. I talked about this yesterday with a friend, and I said it many times before, how the business world was created by men for men, and women have been trying to fit in ever since when they started doing business. The thing with that is, Women had to adopt the mindset of men to do things in the business world to be equal to and to compete with. I'll come back to relationship in a moment, by the way. That, disc that adoption became a conformity of thinking. And so in the business world, especially, men and women tended to think the same way because women were doing that to compete with men. Now, this wasn't necessarily a conscious choice. It was kind of a default operational modality to fit in. In the dating arena and then into relationship arena, this didn't change much, which meant a lot of times met women were in their masculine, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, I'm not going to tell stories right now, where basically women were in their masculine when they go into dating. Now, this is nothing to do with gender or sexuality, excuse me, sexual polarity, se rewind. This is nothing to do with um, heterosexuality or not. Women were in the masculine from the business world and would transfer that into the dating and a relationship experience while still being straight. So it's not about suddenly going gay. We're not talking about that or anything, just to be clear. A lot of men, and I was one of the one of the prime examples of this, would give up our masculine. Well, I didn't know what masculine was at the time, just to be transparent. But I would give up my role of leadership and taking charge, which was part of the traits of masculinity, because she was doing it all for me. That happened three times, by the way, different, three different relationships that happened for me. So what happened for a lot of women is they've learned, they're have they learning now, thankfully, and I'm helping a lot of women I talk to, disengage that um, masculine mindset operational thing to, at least when they're out of business, just drop into their family when they're in their own selves and also when they're in romantic settings. This separation, this, this, this shift for a lot of women is actually something they don't often realize. The business world, as I said, was a place where women have been involved for quite a while, especially women are entrepreneurs or running companies or leadership roles, have often had to put on this like mindset, this paradigm of belief about how to be in the world, business-wise, but it becomes so consuming they don't take it off any other time. So number one, ladies, when you're outside the business world, and if you can do it in the business world this way, great too, but when you're outside the business world, remember who you are as a feminine woman, if that's your natural state, because men and women are different, let me be clear about that. And masculine and feminine overlays that generally, but not always the same 100% match, meaning that there are some women who are naturally masculine 
and some men who are naturally feminine. But generally speaking, more women are naturally feminine and more men are naturally masculine when we remember to be there. So ladies, when you forget that you're truly a more feminine woman, if that's your natural um, alignment, and you see putting the masculine shell or masculine mask, you're not going to be in the place of healthy relationship with anybody, ultimately. And that's the price you pay. And you may have, you may have your own experiences, and you're probably thinking of memories yourself, but where in your past relationship experiences, you would date men who either weren't masculine themselves because you took up the whole space, or would fight you for it, or if he even tried to dominate you for it, which is where a lot of this control stuff comes from. I'm coming back to the relationship point I was going to make at the beginning. I had to make the sidebar. Okay, so let me jump back into that part. As I said in many of my talks, I talk about it in my book and in my coaching as well, the masculine feminine polarity is a big part of how relationships work or don't work. Respect is when we start to understand that difference, as I mentioned from Alison Armstrong. We understand we are different beings and different styles of functioning, different emotion expression, different ways of thinking, etc., etc., etc. When we understand that difference is not worse or better, but it's just equal, that's when things can get help. We can have a healthier connection with somebody. I talked about that more yesterday. But what I want to speak about today is, is this, I would say habit, addiction, desire, um, to dominate, to control the other person. Now usually, uh, I'm going to say is that usually or not. Oftentimes, this is definitely a domination of men over women because when men have a bad habit, <clears throat> I'm not going to record this is kind of, hmm, sorry, I'm careful I say this. A lot of men don't really know how to be around a woman who owns her power. That's safe. <laughs> I was going to say that. So what happens basically, to be blunt, is that men oftentimes, when they're with a woman, don't give her room to grow into herself, or, or in fact, excuse me, don't even give them room to embody themselves fully. It's an ongoing challenge. And it frankly is a perversion of your partner. For the men, this is. Now, there are women who do the opposite to men. Not many, but I know women who basically have um, bull busted, um, castrated, metaphorically speaking, their men over the years. But generally, for most women, that doesn't happen anymore. But men are still in a bad habit of not letting women, like, stretch their wings, so to speak. I don't mean flying away, but like when women are in their feminine and embodying the feminine and, and living in their feminine heart, as I've shared in other talks, when I first experienced this back in a training I took in 2007, so yeah, 2007, I was so in worship of that. I now know what it's like to experience women in their feminine and I'm in total respect or an appreciation of that. And to be honest, not many men are. They don't even know what it is. So in this, I'm hoping we'll reach more men and be understood by men to know when women are in the feminine, be happy. Because <laughs> as we as men can appreciate that. And yes, we can be attracted to that too. But the challenge is, like I said, is this thing about control. Men are um, trained in a way to be the dominant in the partnership. And I don't mean that in a sexy way. <laughs> I mean, in the place they control, they are making their partners less than. And this is the challenge we're facing as we're moving into the new millennium. And one well, thing we're doing, a new paradigm, is that women are equal, as I said many times before, women are equal to men. Different, but equal. And that's the thing I want to mention today as well, as I talked about yesterday. But in this talk, I want to make sure you get the point. Men, if you're watching this, ladies, if you're listening, as well, that for both genders, there's room to grow, to communicate, to understand, because part of this is the lack of communication. I'm aware I was talking yesterday with a friend of mine about some leaders I know where the relationship was out of whack because he was always in charge running the show. And when she started stepping stronger and stronger to her leadership roles to be equal to him, he didn't make room for that. And that's control in another way. It's by it's negligence in a way also. But not honoring that and respecting both partners is where the relationship failed. In fact, they, got, they broke up. I'm keeping names off the table so it's confidential. But the realization is that for us in a relationship now, we have opportunities to learn from each other, men and women. We get to learn who we really are. We also get to respect each other. And also we get to let go of control. This is the shift that we're growing into and we have been for quite a long time. But I keep seeing it happen. So I'm like repeating to the people like we can change this to be a healthier connection for all of us, for men and for women. So this 
little ditty, this little chat, is a reminder about that. If you're having some challenges, I definitely invite you to reach out to me. I'll put some links in the comments so you can check out some stuff I offer. But also, if you want to get some direct help, just message me over social media. This is something I want to talk about more. And if you're feeling stuck with this and you want some clarity, I will help you. It's something I've become very aware of over the last 15 years and definitely the last 13 in direct trainings. So I'm passionate about this message and passionate about this work. And I want to help you get to navigate and understand how to be in this place of relationship more effectively, more joyfully, and more in a more fulfilled way. So if you have any questions about this, by the way, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, when I sign up, I'll respond afterwards. It's not like you have to do it when I'm live. But I'll tell you about the replays and everything else as well, so you know how to find me and catch up with my broadcasts. Um, this, as I mentioned, is episode number 963. Yes, just checking the, the screen. 963. So there's a lot more behind this, and there's a few more coming too. I mean, planning at number 1,000 in about a month or two. So my invitation to you is to keep going deeper in your own life and having what you want. And again, I'll put some links in the comments. You can reach out to me, and I'm going to tell you when you find the replays, you can watch my other broadcasts, including yesterday's, to get more clarity, focus, understanding, and, and, and direction of what you want to do in your life. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can join me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. The time may vary, but I'm always, it's always every day. I've not missed one for quite a long time which is why we're episode number 963 now. Um, and you can always comment, interact on the live broadcast or on the replay. The replays are stored on my business page on Facebook, or I should say they're more easily sorted on that page because on my personal page, there's so many other things posted. But on my personal page on Facebook, excuse me, business page on Facebook, you can watch all the replays, at least the first few hundred are saved there that you can see, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. However, Facebook hasn't been showing them all, which is kind of annoying, so I've got a backup plan, which is my YouTube channel. So all my broadcasts get put onto my YouTube channel as well, where every single one of them is really there. I know, I've checked them. I add, them, I add one every night when I upload from the previous broadcast. If that makes any sense. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where you can watch all my broadcasts, or some of them, if you want to do that. But you can search through keywords, um, or titles, look for things that speak to you and scan through and find the brief place you want to watch. My work in helping my clients attract healthy relationships is deeper than a lot of people give their own clients. So if you want to go deep and you want to have some amazing transformation, let's talk. Again, there'll be some links in the comments you can check out um, that will help you get more clarity, more guidance, and more direction. And again, I invite your comments. How does this land for you? Does this make sense to you? Are you challenged by this? Does it speak to you? I'll keep you thinking about that one. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me, as always. And I'll be back in tomorrow with another broadcast. That'll be 964. And uh, as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.